there are about a million beautiful things I could say for Disney Pixar's Luca. I could easily gush over the incredible score, the Studio Ghibli vibe, the perfect needle drops, and the gorgeous, enticing display of the fictitious Italian seaside town, Porto Rosso. The way I just want to visit this town in real life is just, like, it hurts. It hurts me. However, what I really want to talk about today is the beautiful way in which director Enrico Casarossa tackles Luca's main themes of acceptance and the idea of becoming who we truly are. In short, to me, Luca is a movie all about islands. It's about physically being on an island and metaphorically so. At the heart of Luca is the friendship between the titular character, a 13-year-old sea monster who lives in constant fascination of what exists above the tide, and his rebellious sea monster friend, Alberto. From the moment we respectively meet these two characters, the audience can tell that there is something being hidden, repressed, and ignored by the two. There's an overall lack of true acceptance for who Luca and Alberto really are. This is perhaps best portrayed in the visual idea of coming out of the water and turning human. The film sets up this idea that these two characters can only ever be one thing, monster or boy and never both. Like an island that is stuck in the middle of land and sea, Alberto and Luca are in the middle of acceptance. They are not really sure who or what they can actually be. Both characters are on respective journeys, not only to see and experience a new world, but expose the true versions of themselves in doing so. I have seen a lot of people compare this movie to another coming-of-age movie set in Italy, Call Me By Your Name. And look, the similarities are there, I will give you that. But as the director himself states, these are purely coincidental. In fact, I would personally argue that Luca is closer in tone and vibe to Cinema Paradiso than anything else. Luca's beautiful score by Dan Roma was even inspired by Ennio Morricone's score for Cinema Paradiso. And if you have not seen that film and you loved Luca, I cannot stress enough how much I think you will enjoy that movie. But before I continue, I would be remiss to not showcase all the mere coincidences between Call Me By Your Name and Luca. So let's just get this out the way and then we can go from there. Throughout Luca, there is a consistent reminder that the surface world will never accept sea monsters as people. Luca's parents, despite their hearty intentions, deny their son the ability to truly express himself. To highlight the town's fears, the movie begins with two fishermen hunting down a sea monster, with music from Rossini's opera The Barber of Seville accompanying the sequence just to further emphasize how the city sees these creatures. They are the barbers of Porto Rosso. Despite his parents' fears, Luca is a dreamer. He's a kid who's not sure what he wants, but he knows that he wants more than what he has. In his friendship with Alberto, Luca sees a more complete version of himself. He sees someone who appears to have accepted duality in life, the way he can just come and go from being sea monster to boy. Someone who he thinks has mastered the art of true self-expression and acceptance. Likewise, in Luca, Alberto sees something different. He, he sees a home. The character becomes somewhat desperate for Luca to never leave or betray him, as he's experienced that sort of tragedy before. Early in the movie, Alberto introduces a recurring motif, an idea of shutting out that voice in your head, refusing to wholeheartedly accept oneself. He remarks, I know your problem. You got a Bruno in your head. A Bruno? Yeah. I get one too sometimes. Alberto, you can't. Alberto, you're gonna die. Alberto, don't put that in your mouth. Luca, it's simple. Don't listen to stupid Bruno. The whole Silencio Bruno motif could be seen as stemming from Alberto's abandoned father, thus the character's hatred for giving in and giving that voice credit for anything. When Luca and Alberto meet Julia, the town's local outcast, they are shocked by her kindness. I mean, for her, she's just happy to have some friends who will finally help her stop the reign of terror by the town's bully, Ercoli. 
the embodiment of exclusivity and anti-acceptance. Julia invites the boys to live with her and her father, Massimo, a one-armed fisherman who deeply terrifies Luca and Alberto due to his stature and occupation. However, underneath Massimo's tough exterior, he is a loving and caring father who grows quite the affinity towards Alberto. What we later realise is that Massimo feels that hole that Alberto's father, who we can only assume was Bruno, left in his life. As I mentioned before, there are some clear LGBTQ themes and allegories in Luca. The very concept of being a sea monster, something that can be hidden and concealed, only exposed in secret, further pushes that allegory and takeaway. A great example of this is shown during Luca and Julia's dream sequence in which Luca stares at Pinocchio, another Italian character known for his desire to be a real boy and normal. While Luca and Julia bond over their mutual interest in education, even toying with the idea of attending the same school, Alberto is reminded of his abandoned past. In a last ditch effort to persuade his friend to see the truth, and how the town will never accept who they really are, Alberto comes out, if you will, in front of Julia. Expecting Luca to take his side and reveal himself as well, Luca denies his true self, waging abuse towards Alberto and further concealing his own truth. He pushes Alberto back into the sea, back to the island. During the third act, the Porto Rosso Cup, Luca is forced to keep his true appearance a secret. When Alberto is threatened in the rainy finale, Luca faces a difficult choice for anyone hiding something. He's tasked with either remaining hidden or risking everything. Alberto, who's been captured by Eccoli, even tells his friend, Stop. Just stay there. You're still okay. Luca rides into the rain, rescuing his dear friend, even though he knows that this will expose who he really is in front of the entire town. Throughout Luca, Casarosa has been arguing that being honest, accepting, and true is really the only way to grow and live our lives. As the director remarked about his own best friend, who was also named Alberto, he pushed me out of my comfort zone and pushed me off many cliffs, metaphorically and not. I probably would not be here if I didn't learn to chase my dreams from him. When the townspeople lower their weapons and commend Luca and Alberto for their efforts and rescuing of Julia, we understand Casarosa's thesis that coming out or exposing yourself for who you truly are is not at all easy. It's tough, and it will make some enemies, particularly people like Ercoli, who live in exclusive and upper-class societies, who refuse to let the little people in. But to live a lie and to hide yourself out of fear is something far worse. As Luca's grandmother later remarks, Some people, they'll never accept him. But some will. And he seems to know how to find the good ones. In the movie's emotional conclusion, Luca and Alberto say goodbye to one another. Juxtaposing their initial meeting, Alberto comments, You got me off the island, Luca. I'm okay. While this is in relation to a physical island, it is also a metaphoric one, as Alberto now lives with Massimo, having a father figure and home once again. In my favourite shot of the movie, Luca stands on the train steps and notices the oncoming rain. Instead of running inside and concealing himself once again, Luca opens his eyes and allows the rain to wash over him, revealing his real sea monster form and looking toward a new and exciting horizon. A beautiful tomorrow of true acceptance.